Hello, and welcome back to the STM32 Q5G Advanced Debug Feature. I'm Bruno, and I'm your host for this video series. So let's dig into our Serial Wire Viewer Debug session. I'm just going to switch to STM32 Q5G using the very same code as I've been using so far. Before we jump into the debug session, I just wanted to highlight that we are also going to use the Serial Wire Viewer to trace the event and exception. So it's important for us to understand that there are a few interrupts that can happen on this project and the most common one is the actual cystic handler. So we can see here it's basically doing a simple increment tick and is the one responsible to ensure that our how delay actually works throughout the entire code. But I'm also going to use the IT import. So as you guys remember, I had a macro defined here that is pretty much making use of one of the 32 ITM stimulus ports that we can play and throughout the code execution I'm gonna use the very last one so the third one to change from one and two prior to going into the main loop so this will actually allow me to monitor this transition and the time it's spent in this part of the code execution as well all right now that we have the basis layout for what to expect let's start our debug session now that I'm on the debug perspective all I have to do is go to window, show view, serial wire viewer and select the trace log. With the trace log I can actually go to the configuration trace and starting by the ITM stimulus port I need to make sure that the number turn one is the one selected because it's the one that I'm referring to on my code and just to keep and make sure that our log is pretty clean and remove the exception trace log as well. So that way each and every exception is not gonna be shown on the log at this point in time. So by hitting okay and starting our trace, I can actually resume the code and I'm just gonna hit suspend right now because the very first information that I want is right here at the beginning. So we have the sync right at the same cycle we can see that we also have the IT import number turn one with the data number one. So if we roll back to our code, we can actually see that the ITM port is the number 31 and we selected the value one to be placed to it. So this one is actually reflecting to this particular line of the code. And if we do scroll down a little bit, we can actually see that we are calling again the same macro, but this time we are issuing the number two and we can see this one reflecting on the code. So the very good information is that you are actually have a pretty precise timestamp that it took for performing all these actions. So the initialization, the GPIO, the TMA, the UART, and the printf function. So all of that took around 0 0.12 milliseconds. Great, now we do have the information from the ITM part that we manually selected. So that's a very easy way to measure the amount of time spent without using the usual toggle with a scope method. And a very useful thing that we're gonna actually change right now on our code, that we're gonna back on the serial wire settings and I'm actually gonna re-enable the trace exceptions right now. So by adding the trace exception to rerun, we can now see that the exception is recurring is actually the CST. So by pausing the program, I can actually go into the trace log and I can see that the majority of the exceptions was caused by the C-stick. As you may know, the C-stick is set to happen every one millisecond. So if we analyze the timestamp between uh, the trace exceptions, we can actually see the one millisecond being held here and here and here. So it's always one millisecond between the execution trace log. All right, so the last feature that I wanted to cover with you guys is shown through the, again, window, show view, serial wire viewer, and is the statistical proofing. This is the only one that requires the application to be running for a while to then uh, how to show the information. So to ensure that we all have the same configuration here, I'm enabling the PC sampling, the timestamps, I've kept the previous trace exceptions and I'm also using uh, only the port 0 as the default 
I removed the 31 for this particular measurement. So by hitting OK, I can start the trace and then start the code execution. I'm going to wait for a few milliseconds and now that we have plenty of time already spent, I can suspend the application and it will actually show to us the amount of percentage of time it spent on each and every function. So of course, we are going to spend most of our time on the how delay and the get check, which is part of the how delay function. And we can see that's roughly 99.86% of our application is spent there. There's also a lot of time spent on the cystic handler. So all these three functions are part of the combined how delay. And we do have a small amount of time spent on the ITMs and char because of the pre-net functions. So if we actually want to make our code slightly more proficient, we can see where it's spending most of its time. So this is very similar to the task manager of your firmware. So you know where you're spending most of your time. You can decide if this makes sense or not for your application code. In our example, it doesn't a lot of sense because it's using a huge delay and it's taking most of our processing time on that. So that was it guys. I hope you had fun watching how to use the Surewire viewer. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And if you need further information, please visit st.com. Thank you.